G'day. In this video, I'm going to do some projections. Uh, now, this is a real life case study. Um, there's 1.55 in superannuation, a $700,000 term deposit, and also no debt, and going to retire at age uh, 67 and going to look to receive $75,000 per year. So we already know that um, whilst their age pension age, there will be no age pension. They're well above the the upper threshold where you receive no pension uh, as a couple of homeowner, which is uh, just under $1,050,000. So let's go and have a look at the numbers and see what it looks like and see um, how long money is going to last and whether they might be able to take out a little bit more than uh, $75,000 per year. So I'll just flick the camera and give you a look at the key stats here. And as you can see, he's uh, 67, uh, retirement age at 67, I put life expectancy at age 92. Um, I've also got here that it's a couple homeowner and there's $50,000 of, of assessable but non investable assets. Here's the total investments of 2.25 mil and $75,000 of retirement spending. And I have not made any allowance to adjust that down at all. Generally, we like to, um, as we get older, we will spend less uh, in the probably the last third of retirement. Uh, and we can factor that in by putting it negative one, but just to be conservative, um, I'm not gonna do that. So it assumes 75 grand all the way through to age 90. Um, I've gone for quite a conservative portfolio. The reason for that is that the, um, there is a $700,000 term deposit. And that gives us these rates of return, 4.6%. 2.4 is the pessimistic, and that just means that there's more money that's invested in conservative assets. And if I just change that to, say, more of a, a growth portfolio at four, you can see that the return here goes up, the 4.9, but the pessimistic goes down because there's more uh, volatile uh, assets or more growth assets that are volatile in the short term. And there's a 90% chance of these outcomes happening. So what I'll do is I'll just go back to the more conservative portfolio and let's have a look at the numbers, see how it pans out. Life expectancy is the line here. Um, so, at no, And you can see that um, under the base case, which is 4.6% for the first decade and then it reverts back to 4.2%, um, that you're still going to have um, yeah, a bit over a million dollars under the pessimistic uh, hell in a handbasket scenario where the first decade's pretty ordinary, there's still $600,000. Um, the pessimistic one, we'll see here that Centrelink actually starts to kick in, but it doesn't kick in till age, you know, to the sort of early 80s. Um, so in this scenario where there's substantial amount of money left, I would say, well, can we, can we look to spend a little bit more? Um, you know, might $80,000 or so $82,000, you know, can we spend that amount? Well, let's call it 85. Um, and the reason why I'll do that, and we'll also decrease the spending by 1% per, per year. And what does that give us? Again, pretty, pretty handy sort of numbers there. Um, now, at age 92, it's highly unlikely that a uh, couple will, you know, in this couple will be there, so they may not be assessed as Centrelink as a couple, but as a single, and that's where the assets test change substantially. But in this scenario, completely fine, can spend a bit more, uh, and uh, please remember all the, um, the income levels are increased with inflation as well, so it, it is inflation adjusted. They're conservative numbers, which I like. There is a optimistic number there, which I broadly ignore, because I just wanted to see the worst case scenarios for clients. To answer that ultimate question, do I have enough? In this scenario, I believe they do. But please remember, these are very long-term projections, and we do them throughout a client relationship, just to make sure they have the comfort knowing that they are fine. Please remember, this is also general advice. Thank you for listening and uh, cheers, bye.